Thank you, thank you. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! Now we got that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> good. Welcome to Raleigh. Thank, thanks for joining us. Yeah. It's good, good, good. So, what is one I wanted to ask? Um, how, how did the role of Batman evolve for you? Well, when, I, when did this story all begin? Yeah, maybe. Which still is Some of ended. you have probably heard this story before. I, um, it was an audition. It was a cold audition. Um, I had never done an animated character. It was the first animated character I ever auditioned for. Isn't that amazing? That just doesn't happen. That's just fluky. And um, I did a lot of uh, theater in New York. I think most of you know I'm a, I'm a New York actor. I went to Juilliard and I did a lot of off-Broadway and Broadway. And I was in LA. Oh, but theater actors, in order to supplement their income, you learn pretty quickly that you can't really make a living in the theater. It's a lot of love, it's a lot of you know, joy, but not a lot of money. So what a lot of them do is uh, commercial work on the side because Madison Avenue's in New York. And so the commercial voiceover world is based there. And uh, I started doing commercial voiceovers to supplement my theater income. So I was in LA doing a pilot for a series and my voiceover agent said, you know, they're putting together this new show over at Warner Brothers. Why don't you go over and give it a shot? It's uh, Batman. I said, new show? Batman's been around forever. And he said, no, 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 it's never, never been an animated show. I, I was so naive to the whole Batman universe. I didn't know it had never been an animated show. So I went in and just, it was just an actor in an audition um, doing a cold read and just using my imagination in the booth. I walked in, I met Bruce Tim and Andrea Romano and uh, Eric Radomski, all the original people creating the show. And I was, I didn't even know who I was meeting. I didn't know how talented these people were. And um, Bruce Tim said, the first thing he said to me was, what, what's your background on Batman? What do you know about Batman? I said, well, I know the Adam West show from the 60s when I was a kid. He went, no, 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 no. We love Adam, but that's not what we're doing. He said, don't you know about the Dark Knight and the legacy? And I said, no, I don't know anything. He said, so he brought me up to speed. He said, no, this is very noir. It's New York in the 30s. It's dark. It's gritty. Uh, his parents are murdered in front of him on the street. He lives to avenge their deaths. Um, he lives in the caves. He's, he's a dual identity. Um, he's, a, he's a tortured character. I said, boy, you're, you're describing Hamlet. You know, you're describing an epic Shakespearean tragic character. He said, well, give it a shot, see what you do. So I went in the booth and I just put myself in the situation and using my imagination, I just put myself into the darkest most the, the the deepest kind of pain that I could think of and this voice started coming out and they essentially hired me on the spot and they'd seen over 500 people but I think and they've been looking for months but I think the reason I got it was because was because of my naivety because I had no preconceptions I was really free to just improvise in that situation and and let my imagination run wild. Um, I wasn't trying to impress anybody. I wasn't trying to fulfill any preconceptions. Um, I was really just an actor in an audition using my imagination. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't happen a lot. Um, to be in that kind of a pure situation, it doesn't happen a lot. So I was very, 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 very fortunate that uh, this all happened 27 years ago, uh, when that kind of thing could still happen. So, that's how it happened. Hi. Hey, um, can you tell the story of how you found out you were going to meet Mark Hamill? Like, what, did you geek out when you found out you were going to meet Luke Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a complicated story, actually. I don't know if any of you know that um, the original Joker was Tim Curry from Rocky Horror. And he, I thought he was great. He was great. 
But I got a call saying there's going to be a change. Um, Mark Hamill's going to do it. And I thought, Mark Hamill? Luke Skywalker? <laughs> you know, goody two-shoe Luke Skywalker? It just didn't seem to make sense to me. And then he came in and he read... You know, to be, to, be, to be fair to Tim, Tim was great. I was surprised when they were going to replace him. He was great as the Joker. I felt that Tim Curry was crazy scary. Like, lock up the children, don't let them see him. You know, like, really disturbing. Mark was crazy funny. Crazy exciting. Um... To be in the booth with him, I wish you could see him in the booth. He, you know how um, Jim Carrey has that rubber face where he just like, he distorts? Well, Mark does that in the booth. His face becomes the Joker. He like inhabits the character. Ew, Batty, you know? <laughs> and it, it's just like, he's just, this whole thing comes over him and I'm like, ha. Ah. And you, you, if you're in there long enough with him, you're covered with spit. Because <laughs> he's like, he's like, you know, and he's, what's wonderful is he's such a generous actor. Um, it's wonderful to be, you know, actors are people. There are selfish ones. There are um, generous ones. There are, there are mean ones. There are kind ones. There are ones you really want to work with and the ones you just pray to God you don't have to work with. You know what I mean? They're, they're people. And Mark is a generous, giving, fabulous person to work with. He, he lo I see when he's watching me, I watch him watching me like this. He's, he's watching me like a kid. And I know it's because he's getting such joy out of the better I am, the more excited he gets. Because he knows he's going to have more to work with. That's what acting is. It's really like, like playing ball when you were a kid. Or, or a volley in tennis. You really want to get a good volley going with the other player. The better the other player is, the better you'll be. You know what I mean? And um, that's the way it is with acting. Uh, if you're with a generous actor, they want you to be good. They're not going to be competitive with you because they know the better you are, the better they're going to be. And Andrea Romano, you know, who did most of the casting for all the Warner Brothers stuff, she brought all these different actors together. And she started out training as an actor. She studied acting uh, in New York when she was uh, in college. And then she got off into pr the production end of things. But she understands how actors think. She understands what the chemistry is. And so she always tries to cast people that she knows will play well together. You know, it's not, not just being the right voice or being a good actor. She wants to know that you're going to be someone that that people want to work with. So she tends to get very generous people together. So that's a good question. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I'm Michelle. I would just like to ask, what is it like playing an edgy character? You seem a lot more open in real life. What's it like playing what? Edgy. How old are you? I'm 11. Okay. What did she ask? She says, what's it like playing an edgy character? Because oh. you're so calm in real life. An edgy character. Well... They're the fun characters, the edgy characters, because they're complex. You know what I mean? Playing the good guy, I mean, Superman, come on. <laughs> you know? Square jaw, broad shoulders, can fly, can see through walls. Where's the challenge? There's no challenge. Just kind of whistles through life, you know? But Batman, tortured, lonely, edgy. <laughs> so it, it's fun. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more, there's a lot more for an actor to, 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 everyone always asks me, what other superhero would you like to play? And I say, are you kidding? <laughs> I got the brass ring. I got the most interesting one to start with. What other one is there? Hey there, I'm Lex. Hey, Lex. No, no relation. Lex. Oh. No relation. I swear. I, swear. Um, I don't know if it's a good memory for you, uh, playing Captain Sunshine in, <laughs> in Venture Brothers. Did you have any influence over that satirical, because it's, it's so 
Batman, but not. It plays on him. How, was that you? Captain Sunshine. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it was funny. I, <laughs> I'll tell you a secret. I, uh, this, is, this is funny. I um, got the offer. Um, I was in LA. I live in New York. I work in LA. So I go back and forth a lot. Um, and I was in LA, I got the offer. I didn't actually read the script. I thought, oh, cool, I think an animated a, character in thing. New York. That's a good thing. This will be cool, I'll do it. So I, I didn't have time, and I just got it. I went to the booking, and the, the New York shows tend to be a lot edgier. Um, than the Hollywood shows. The Hollywood shows are more corporate, I've found. New York shows are much edgier. So I get there, and I hadn't actually read it. I get to this reception area, and I said, do you have sides for me? And she said, oh yeah, 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 they're right here, we're waiting for you. So I look at the material, and I'm reading it, and I'm thinking, oh, he's really into Robin. Oh, he's really into Robin. Oh, no. <laughs> what am I going to do? It's funny, but it's really into Robin. So I said to the receptionist, I said, you know, I, um, I have to put money in the meter in my car. She went, meter? No one drives in New York. No one has cars. I said, yeah, 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 I have my car parked down. I'll be right back. So I go downstairs in this building and I'm on the street thinking, what am I going to do? I can't do this. Warner Brothers will kill me. I can't do this role. But I already accepted it. So I'm going down the street like this and I thought, you're an actor. You're an actor. It's a role. Of course you can do the role. So I go back to the thing and then I think, I can't do this role. They're going to kill me. I'll never be able to play Batman again. And I'm thinking, damn it, Kevin, you're an actor. Go back upstairs and play this role. It's a wonderful thing. So I'm going back and forth and then I thought, nope, I'm going to do it. So I go back upstairs, the elevator's open, and two of the producers are waiting there. And one of them goes to the other one, you owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> they knew exactly what I was doing. That's awesome. I loved playing him. He's a funny character. I was just nervous because of, you know, he's really into Robin. That um, <laughs> someone at the studio wouldn't be happy about it. But they, they were cool. Everybody was cool. Right Thank you. It was, and then once I was so successful, I said, couldn't we have a spin-off? Couldn't we have a Captain Sunshine series? <laughs> Didn't happen. Hi, my name's David. Nice. Hi. Honor to meet you, finally. Good to it's meet like you. It's like one of my bucket list things. Thank you. Um, so, growing up, I always watched, you know, I was born in the early 80s. I grew up watching, like, Thundercats, G.I. Joe's, Silverhawks. And then when the animated series came along... You, I feel like, were a big influence in the career that I have now in law enforcement just oh, because of the way you portrayed Batman as a, as a character. Well, I've always also been very interested in the voice characterization, just work itself. I've always loved different voices and playing around and everything like that. What would be your suggestion to look if you wanted to get into that line of work? Um, the question is, what, 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 what would be my suggestions about getting into voice acting, how to get into it? The most important thing to remember about voice acting is that it's acting. A lot of people think it's making funny voices. Um, it's not. It's creating a whole character, but only being able to use your voice. But it's creating that whole character, making it so real with all the contradictory aspects of human nature. Um, people come up to me at Comic-Con all the time and go, oh, I'm gonna do you, listen to me do you. And they do a very convincing me. And I say, okay, now I have to kill you because <laughs> I don't want you to get my job. Or they'll say, listen to me do Mark Hamill. And they do a great Mark Hamill. Once you've established the voice, dozens of people can imitate it. But thinking of it, Coming up with it, that's what you're paid for as an actor. When I went into audition for the role, they had literally seen over 500 people. Now, there are probably a dozen people among those 500 who could play the role as well as I did, maybe more. 
But they just didn't think in the audition to do what I did. What they're paying for in you as an actor is your imagination. They're paying for your creativity. Anyone can mimic. Not anyone, but a lot of people can mimic. So my advice to people who want to get into the business is join acting groups. Take acting classes. Develop your chops as an actor because that's what you're going to need. Okay. Um, because when you go into the audition, you don't get a second chance to have a first impression. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You want to go in and you just want to impress them. Because nine times out of ten, no, ten times out of ten, they don't really know what they want. They'll know it when they hear it. But I always go in, you've had this experience, I'm sure, I yeah. always go in and I say, what do you, uh, give, me, give me what you're looking for, G give me some direction, w what should I try? And they always say, oh, just show us what you got. Just, just take, a, take a stab, let's see what you have. So you're often shooting in the dark, going on, and it's just, it's, it's, just a, it's just a luck of whether you make the right choice. And you learn how to make those choices from experience, from acting, you know? Yeah. Um, often in playing a love scene, the most interesting aspect is, is how much you hate the person. You know what I mean? It's often the contradictions. Or if you're really angry in an angry scene, you're thinking how much you love the person. It's often the opposite. Like in life, it's often the opposite. And that feeds scenes. So I would say acting classes or groups that you can get involved with. Okay. Because as competitive as the business is now, and it's really competitive, they are always still looking for new voices. They like to get new sounds, fresh sounds. A reason they keep going to a lot of the same people is because those people are good, you know? Tom Kenny is good at what he does. Um, Rob Paulson is good. You know, these people just come up with great, they're good actors and they can do good voices. Uh, Mark Hamill's fantastic. So that's why you keep hearing a lot of the same people because they're just so good at what they do. But they, believe me, they are always looking for new people. So give it a shot. Hi, my Hi. name is Josh. Hi, Josh. Um, when I first saw Batman the Animated Series, I was lying in a hospital bed dealing with a lot of medical stuff. Oh, wow. And it really, I love the show so much, it carried me through. And that's an experience I look back at and I'm just like, you know, that kind of made me who I am or stuff like that, you know? Uh -huh. And I'm just wondering if there's any personal experiences that helped you capture the Batman that was expressed in Batman the Animated Series or later on. Wow. Of course. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to share one? Yeah. They say that um, in acting, they say that you are your instrument. And you are. You, 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 you are the sum of your life experience. All they, no one can teach you how to act in acting school. And it took me a long time to figure this out. I kept waiting in Juilliard. When are they going to teach me how to act? When are they going to teach me how to act? I was already acting. All they can teach you how to do is to get in touch with who you are because that's what you're going to draw on as an actor. That's all you have, is your life experience. And everything, everything you've, you've lived up to that point is what you bring to the roles you play. And I, I had an unusual childhood in that, well, it wasn't unusual, it was pretty normal, but um, by the time I was 16, I moved in with an, a friend's family uh, so I could finish high school because my family just disintegrated and uh, my parent my father was an alcoholic my mother was unable to cope with anything my siblings all moved away and I was the last one there and I had to get out and I moved in with friends and I finished high school uh, early because I was so desperate to get out of this town 
And I moved into New York when I was 17, and I've been supporting myself ever since. I got a scholarship to go to Juilliard. I was working summer jobs. Um, I've been on my own since then. But uh, a lot of what I draw on for Bruce Wayne and Batman has to do with the relationship I had with my father. Um, I had a very difficult relationship with my father. He was, a, he was a, an angry drunk. And, uh, but he was a tortured guy. Uh, life had not worked out the way he wanted it to. And at one point, when I was about 15, um, he tried to kill himself. And I was the one who had to go to the hospital and identify him because no one else would go. And I had to drive the car home that was covered with his blood because the police had to release it. And I had a learner's permit at that point. And that was a very heavy thing for a 15, 16 year old to do, whatever sure. it was. For sure. What I dealt with in the scene at the grave in Phantasm was that moment when I was confronting my father in that room. Why did you do this? Why would you do this? And it all just came up. And afterwards, Andrea came in and she just held me. She saw that I had hit something really deeply personal because I was that 16-year-old again. So you draw on that stuff. Um, and it makes you very naked. And you have to be willing to be naked to be an actor. Um, so I, I had a lot of darkness and, and loneliness in my childhood. And that really fed into Batman and Bruce Wayne. It, it was appropriate. So it fed me into the character. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right, Flash, uh, lighten up our mood. <laughs> I'll try. On right. a lighter moment. Oh, yes. Um, so my question is, so again, nice to see you second day in a row. Um, during the f recording with Adam West for The Grey Ghost. Ah, oh, I love Adam. You it's here for Adam West. Yes. You got my question. <laughs> what was it like truly having two generations of Batman there. I mean, did you feed off of each other? How did that go? <laughs> I was nervous the first time I met him because you know, you're, 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 you almost feel like you're treading on someone else's cape, you know what I mean? I mean, he was so identified with the character that uh, Andrea told me he was coming in to do the role and I thought, Adam West? I said, but I'm doing bad. I'm, well, ye, ye. this is gonna be weird. <laughs> he couldn't have been cooler. He was such, he was an elegant man. He was a classy guy. No ego, no attitude. He loved acting. He loved to work. And I said, I said, it's such an honor to meet you. He said, oh, come on. He said, it's your role now. Run with it. He said, I had a blast with it. It's your turn. Have fun. And he was very um, fatherly in dealing with me. Um, but he was just like that. He was just a very kind, um, benevolent kind of guy. And very confident in himself. So I, I had a great time working with him. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.